Hey Stars fans, welcome back. Did you know that Reva from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series was originally supposed to die? This is an exclusive from Nathan Johnson at the Direct, and it's with the original Obi-Wan Kenobi trilogy writer Stuart Beatty. Reva wasn't just going to die, she was going to sacrifice herself for Obi-Wan by telling Darth Vader that she had killed him. Why would she do this? Well, Obi-Wan was going to reveal to Reva that Darth Vader is actually Anakin Skywalker, the same person who attacked her friends and left her for dead. So in Stuart Beatty's uh, version, Reva did not know that Vader was Anakin until Obi-Wan tells her. This causes her to change course, to like rethink her actions uh, and to decide to sacrifice herself for Obi-Wan. Reva informs Lord Vader that she's killed Obi-Wan, which enrages Vader because he wanted Kenobi for himself. So in his rage, he kills Reva. Reva's sacrifice takes Obi-Wan off of Vader's radar. So I want to talk to you guys about this. I mean, this is kind of a like a crazy reveal here, you know? Like originally, she was supposed to die. In, in the in the movie, in the trilogy thing that Stewart had kind of, you know, created for, for Disney. It's interesting, during the season, we were asking the question, like, is Reva gonna gonna make it like we know Luke makes it we know Leia's good you can't touch Vader Obi-Wan Reva really was sort of that that question mark was she going to die was she going to turn back to the light side etc so I guess to kind of show her conflict in the series was was interesting she knew that it was Anakin Skywalker in the Kenobi series but in the movie that was going to be different and I actually know that's been kind of a, a gripe it's one of those things I've heard other Star Wars content creators kind of say hey like not very many people knew I mean next to no one knew that Anakin Skywalker was alive and that he was Vader, right? We, we know that Obi-Wan actually does sort of see Palpatine calling Anakin Lord Vader, tells him to rise. So I, it's just sort of a fascinating idea. Let's let's read some of the stuff, though, that uh, I want to read a little bit from this article where Beatty kind of talks about the creation of Reva. So she was my creation. I created Reva all the way through, except the only little difference in mine was she didn't know Darth Vader was Anakin because I was like how'd she know that all she saw was Anakin as Anakin because he hadn't changed to the suit yet so Anakin killed her friends put the scar on her uh, almost killed her left her for dead basically so in her mind the Jedi Council were the biggest villains in the galaxy she believed the lies that they were plotting plotting a coup to overtake the government and to get power but they were stopped by the clones so she believes that's why she's hunting Jedi because she believed the Jedi are the worst, basically. He kind of goes on to talk about Reva's original fate in the story. He says, I, I figured, how would she know that this thing in the mechanical suit that everyone calls Darth Vader is the guy who killed her or tried to kill her? So it was actually Obi-Wan who kind of let her in on that secret and that revelation makes her go, oh my God, I've been wrong this whole time. So she basically goes and saves Obi-Wan by sacrificing herself, telling Vader, I killed Obi-Wan, and then Vader killed her uh, with her knowing that Vader would kill her. So that kind of completed her arc. So just a little bit different that she was absolutely the Inquisitor hunting Kenobi all the way through, driven by her own personal demons. So the idea there is that, you know, we, we kind of ask the question at the start of this, why Kenobi? Why is she so intrigued or obsessed with finding Kenobi? And we learn in episode five, it's all kind of, you know, dropped there that it's Obi-Wan is Anakin's master. And if she could bring him in, she would get maybe an audience with Lord Vader and attack Lord Vader. Because in the series, she knows that Anakin is Darth Vader. So she wants revenge, right, on Darth Vader. Whereas in the trilogy, the opposite is the case. She doesn't know about Vader at all and, and loyally kind of serves him, does his bidding, and wants to actually just destroy Kenobi. So kind of a total switch there. Um, but Beatty goes on to say that he felt she had to die. Yeah, killed by Vader at the end. I, I wanted this story. I wanted her story to end. I wanted Reva to play her part in the Kenobi Vader story, which was essentially at the end, she was she was the one that allowed Vader or basically told Vader to stop hunting Kenobi. So the way that differs, right, is that Palpatine realizes Vader is obsessed with this and, and uh, pursuing Kenobi too much, maybe getting a little jelly, right? But he basically kind of brings Vader back in and says uh, that, you know, he has plans, right? He's, he refocuses Vader and will kind of pull him off of Obi-Wan. So I don't know. What do you guys like better? Do you like the idea that Reva knew who Anakin was and that he was Darth Vader? And then she's just been trying to get close to him this whole time, get like a private audience where she could maybe assassinate him, take her to take her revenge? Uh, or do you like this idea that we originally had? And, you know, that that could have gone through revision or whatever, but it sounds like Stuart Beatty was, was pretty set on, on his idea that Reva was going to pursue Obi-Wan until Obi-Wan reveals that, hey, we all were betrayed, right? The Jedi were betrayed by Anakin. We were, we were 
uh, betrayed by by Chancellor Palpatine, who's actually Darth Sidious, and so on, right? I mean, that revelation would have been there explaining why the Jedi, uh, why Order 66 happens and why... Um, and why her friends were killed and why she was attacked there in the Jedi Temple. So, I don't know, just kind of a lot to think about. Um, he kind of goes on to say that, of course, there are so many great characters during the Purge, uh, dur- during the Great Purge of the Temple and everything. It was like, okay, let's see what she was doing at the Purge. What if she saw everything that went down? What if Anakin slash Vader killed, air quote, killed her, left her for dead, and set her on this path? So all this kind of stuff would, would create like a sense of conflict, some confusion, that blind did the character filled her with hate and rage and all that stuff uh, that makes people Sith or Sith acolytes and so on. So there you go. I mean, that's that's sort of uh, his premise, his setup. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this is cooler? Uh, do you like the way that it was done? It's it's just different. It's interesting to hear that this thing was going to be a trilogy, that Obi-Wan had various arcs, right, where he wanted to connect, surrender to the Force, leave the boy. Uh, the next season is supposed to be more a season, I should say, movie, and in Stuart Beatty's mind was going to be a second movie where in which Obi-Wan would deal with his own mortality, right, and, and understanding, becoming one with the Force and, and exploring the Force in, in kind of a greater way. Getting ready for a moment that we know is coming in episode four, where he will sacrifice himself, uh, for for Luke and for the greater good. So, anyways, so what do you guys think? Uh, would this have been cooler, or or do you like how it was done in the Kenobi series? Be sure to follow for more Star Wars content. Like, subscribe, and as always, may the Force be with you. <laughs> <laughs>